video today. Today we are doing a overview slash light review <laughs> uh, of this new machine that we just picked up. This is a CNC press brake by Bailey. This is one of the most affordable, larger press brakes out there that I came across. I'm sure there's something I'm missing, but for the price range, uh, this was definitely within our budget and with the capabilities that we were looking for. Uh, this model is called the, we would look here, the BP-3305 CNC. This is a 33 ton hydraulic press brake. It's got a 63 inch wide bending bed on it. Before we picked this up, there really wasn't anything out there really showing it actually in use. We ended up pulling the trigger. It's been working great so far. Uh, so I'm gonna go over everything, all the basics about it, uh, what I've learned so far. I'm still brand new to the CNC press brake world. Like I said, this is a super budget model. If you look at all the other press brakes out there, um, you know, you can spend 50,000, 100,000, millions of dollars on a machine that has way more features. This is a really bare bones machine. I'll be going over some of those reasons you'll see why, but it's just two axis. You got your ram, your die going up and down, and then a back gauge that goes back and forth. Well, there is obviously benefits for this being affordable and there's also a lot of disadvantages that it's so affordable doesn't have all the nice features like the higher end machines so i'm going to kind of go over what i've learned so far a little bit of action shots of some of the parts that we've made on it as far as like capacity if you're wondering how much you can bend uh, the machine comes with a multi v die on the bottom it has several different v's for different thicknesses of material the biggest V being two inches, the smallest V being eight millimeters, I believe. It's actually done in millimeters, so the top, the biggest die is 50 millimeters. At that rate, you can bend up to quarter inch plate at two feet wide, uh, and that's the maximum. Unless for, you could pick up a bigger V die that will require less tonnage. There's a whole theory on how the tonnage works for pressing and breaking stuff. If you went down to 3 16 using a 50 millimeter die, Let's see here. So it's 7.6 tons per, per foot of 3 16 So like I said, this is a 33 ton machine. So I think you could comfortably bend up to four feet wide of 3 16 inch thick. And then once you get past 3 16 and thinner, you should pretty much be able to bend the entire width of the press. The main thing I've noticed when we picked, this, picked up this machine is it's just two main punches, uh, fingers, so, so to speak, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I think the proper name is a punch. Uh, so it's only two large punches that equal the 63 inches. And then on the bottom, it is a multi V die. And with this, it's not very fast for doing changes. Uh, there's chains on the side when you can lift up the ram swivel the V, put it to where you want it, let it back down. Uh, so it does take a little bit of time, unlike some of the higher end models out there where there's a, like a slot that you can just set your, your, your dies into really quickly. Also another thing is uh, Bailey doesn't sell individual fingers for this unit. I talked to them and they said a lot of people will just take the stock dies or order a, another set of stock dies and cut them down into fingers because as you can tell you can actually you know you can bend boxes with this since it's got all the individual clamps that came with these just material holders um i'll tell you right now they're not very square as far as this way that way all the other way uh, they're good just to hold your material up but they're not very square if you're trying to go off of that as you can see for doing some of the parts that we bent that you'll see in the video uh, we just set up a square against the V-block because how the the stock fingers are on this machine, they don't really give you a really flat surface if you're bending something narrow. So I think we may end up modifying and making some custom uh, back gauge rests, fingers, whatever you want to call those. It's got a crank handle out front where you can dial in your backstop because it, it goes within a few thousandths when it's retracting and coming back. So like I said, this being more of a budget model, 
it's not the most precise bender in the world. That's what I need to say is it's not the precise. It doesn't got uh, like laser bending where it, it can tell if it needs to go more to bend to 90 degrees or anything like that. Actually, if I bring this over here, we'll do some close-ups. Here's the control panel, super simple. Um, and it's not like what you think on some of the other machines where you can input 3 16 thick, uh, two feet wide, and you want to bend a 90 degree angle, and the computer automatically does everything for you. Uh, all you're doing on the computer is telling how far the punch is going down into the V. That's all you're saying. You're going to say how long it holds it, where your back, where your back age is, how long it takes to retract, if it retracts at all, and a couple little details like that. But as far as bending everything, it's kind of a guessing game. I'm sure there's really good mathematics out there, but uh, I found it just easy just to cut out a couple scraps, do some test bends, figure out where, what everything needs to go, and then I've been doing charts of different thicknesses, V dies, and such. It's allowed for 40 programs to be saved with 25 steps each. You got some emergency stops. You got your foot pedals that go up and down with an emergency stop on that. Most CNC brakes have light curtains that come across, laser light curtains, so if your hand breaks the light, it'll stop the, it'll stop the operation so you don't squish your fingers or anything weird like that. On the sides to get to the finger and adjust all this stuff, these open up, and when you do open these up, there are some I don't know what you want to call them, just uh, switches. So once these gates open, the machine will stop running for safety reasons. Unrelated to the machine, I just wanted to go over, since we're a smaller shop and maybe you're a smaller shop looking at getting one of these, uh, this machine is three phase, 220 power. And the shop that we are in does not have three phase, it only has single phase. Uh, we don't own the shop. And so we weren't gonna, it wasn't justified to try to run three phase power to the shop because we're, we're most likely outgrow the shop or you know do something else down the road so we had to run what is called a phase converter and this takes your standard single phase power converts it don't ask me how you can look that up on other youtube videos and then has power to run the bailey machine if you guys are looking at into this kind of setup this is not a cheap uh deal right here this rotary phase converter combo is pushing 2000 it's 2000 plus plus wiring and all that fun shit it uses really big wire so uh this is expensive just in itself besides the machine so if you need to convert to three phase just know it's gonna be a lot this is the back hatch to get to the back gauges and other stuff in the machine it's got one door so going into the back side of the machine, we open up this. There is that switch I was telling you about that shuts everything off. And here's what the back looks like. So there is your screw that makes the backstop go forward and backward. You got manual adjustment to make your backstop higher or lower depending on what you're working on. Three backstops that can just loosen these up, slide it, tighten them down. Room for fine adjustment. They also can be brought up like that, depending on what you're doing. We look really close here. They're a rounded tip. Now, yeah, you can put stuff up here, but then you can only bend so deep. So might modify this eventually to have a square edge to it. Another small motor. This is for the screws make this go back. Just threw some lights in here. Those don't come with it. Uh, drain for your hydraulics. So that's cool. Some pressure levels. Bunch more pressure regulators up here. But this motor is telling the ram how far to go. So that's one last thing I want to make a note of is to change from, let's say you're going to bend a 90, degree, a 90 degree bend to a 45, the time it takes for that motor to spin and change from a 90 to 45 degree is a long time, probably a good two minutes. So it's not really good for bending one part with multiple different bend angles because it's just going to take a long time. It's more, you got one part that's really basic, you're going to bend 90s in all of them. 
boom 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 do all those then if you had a different bend you would switch it to 45 and bend them all otherwise it's going to take a long time just to bend one part here is the v-die right there multiple sizes on all four sides these clamp it in so you kind of need to bring your your lower punch down center it up snug it all down so you can see here there's a, a post that sticks out on the v-die and then there's a post on the the ram or whatever you want to call that you put this chain around there on both sides all you do then is just lift your ram up it'll lift this whole die you can spin it set the set the ram back down get it all lined up screwed down take the chain back off you're ready to bend so like i said not the fastest way you know unlike some of the other machines out there but i mean for the price of this machine you really can't complain turn the rotary phase converter on pretty quiet after that we'll turn on our on switch on the panel on the left side of the machine on the back here we got a on off switch boom turns it on all the electricals in here i'm not going to get into this but really complicated stuff if you're an average Joe like me, you're never going to touch this. We got all the pumps and motors and shit up here with all the reservoirs, all that fun stuff. Here's the control panel to turn everything on. All we have to do is turn the switch on. While light comes on, computer's turning on. I'll turn this on here in a second, but we hit this green button here. This will light up and this turns our hydraulic pump on. Once the hydraulic pump's on, you're ready to start bending. Here's our single bend operation mode. We can go, this would be your program mode where all your programs are entered. We got our single bend mode there. We'll kind of just quickly go over it. Um, the X, Y is just telling you where everything's at. You can't actually do anything with those. Those are just showing you where your stuff's at. Your XP, that is your back gauge. YP, that's telling you how much throw your your hydraulic ram your your punch is going into the v dx is how much it's going to retract back ht is your hold time how long the ram's going to stay in that position delay is how long it's going to take for your back stop to retract our pp that is our piece count so if we wanted to bend 20 parts with one bend in them we would input 20 and it would just cycle the program until 20 pieces were done cp honestly can't remember what cp is right now <laughs> anyways once you got everything all figured out all you have to do is turn your pump on we'll zoom out here you turn your pump on boom pump is running Hit this green button just once you got all your shit ready to go. Stuff's gonna start moving and uh, let's just bend something random. This is how everything's ran. You got your, your pedals, you're down and you're up. Emergency stop if something bad happens. We're gonna bring our, our punch up. Our finger come forward, it's at two inches right now. This hand crank will make the backstop go back and forth if you need to make a minute adjustment according to the screen. Like I said, for small parts, these are round, so you can't really, you don't really know what's square. So for now, we've been just putting a square up against the V block. And then once you push and hold the down pedal, it'll cycle whatever bend you want to do. Just like that. It's just as simple as run it again, throw it in there. Boom.
the overview on the Bailey CNC press brake EP-3305. This wasn't, you know, like a how-to video or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to do a brief overview, show it off a little bit because there really wasn't much videos out there when we purchased it. Uh, not that a lot of you are looking to get one of these, but I figured I'd just share it and show maybe what the shop has to offer now. Have just scratched the surface on using this machine. I want to do some really big bag bridges that go over your C-notch uh, with some 316s because this can do it. Uh, nothing much more than that, but can maybe do some cross members and some cool stuff that normally you couldn't or you'd have to fully weld, which takes a long time. Hope you guys enjoyed this little overview. Uh, if you have any questions, I guess, uh, leave them down in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Otherwise, if you want to see all the specs of this machine, go check out Bailey's website. I hope you guys enjoyed this little walk around overview video and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Keep on trucking. Peace.